Hello, hi everybody. So today I'm going to be going over my October challenge, my 2023 October challenge. It's January 12th. And uh, so it's been a while since I actually did the challenge and it may be that I've forgotten a lot of the things that I thought about at the time. It's something that I love to do to go over my work to it's for me, it's for you if you're watching, to get a deeper insight into what I was going for, what do I think I accomplished, what did I learn through the challenge, which I already made another video about that you can watch uh, for details if you would like to see that. But this is very particularly about what did I learn from each painting or what was I going for or what did I think about each painting. Now, I wanna say, I'm not going to necessarily be positive here because this is a critique. This is not meant to build myself up. This is meant to understand myself. And I don't think that that can really be done unless I'm honest about some of the things that I think went wrong. So I won't necessarily be being super nice to my art. But keep in mind that I think I've come a really long way. I just looked at a lot of my paintings from 2022 and definitely I've seen a vast amount of improvement and I'm not discounting that in any way. I think I've improved. I don't dislike myself. I don't, I'm not, I'm not even that super hard on myself. I'm really not. I'm very much like art is for the process and the experience. That's the most important thing, but the product is relevant in some cases. And when I'm posting it as a challenge, I kind of am interested in the product. So that being said, if you're still here, if you're still watching, let's get going. Okay, so this time, this challenge had um, only 15 paintings. The one I did before had 30, 31. And this one, it was only a, a painting every other day, which was awesome because I was having so many health challenges and other situations that were going on that I just could not have done a painting every day, but I was able to do a high quality painting every other day. So I don't know where the original painting I did went. You can look at one of my older videos if you wanna see that, but I was working on a painting for the first day for like four or five days and just failing because I wasn't used to working standing up and I wasn't used to working with gouache. I switched back to watercolor. And when I did that, after three days, just decided not to do the watercolor one, I made this one. So let's, let's, let's scoot this all over. The prompt for this was the Tushimi leopard cat. I'm not sure if that I'm saying that correctly. And it was day two. So we didn't have a day one. This one I liked because I was able to tell a story with it and because it was so much better than the one that I got rid of. What I liked about it was I liked this ring of light that I was able to convey. It's really difficult for me to wrap my head around conveying non-material ideas or concepts, symbols and things like that it can be a challenge for me. Um, not that light is a symbol, but light can be portrayed or candlelight can be portrayed many different ways. And I like how I did that. I like how I mixed two concepts. So I had several different images for both the cat and for the antique Japanese lanterns. And a lot of times when I use multiple refer reference images, it's just like, it doesn't turn out great. And it looks a lot better if I just have one reference photo. But in this case, I had multiple and I think it turned out really nice. I love the colors that I chose. Oh, I liked how the shadow turned out under the cat. I don't like how yellow the cat is. I love using yellow as a highlight. This is pretty realistic as far as what the different reference images that I was using look like, the colors of the actual cat that I was trying to portray. It uh, didn't work out for the this particular painting. All right, so day four, day four, <laughs> day four was the yellow build loon. This one, the color palette was, eh, I think I have this upside down. What I liked about it was still the storytelling. On the top, I've painted realistic markings around the neck of the loon. And on the bottom, I have added in a necklace because in the lore about this loon, they have on some jewelry. I loved how 
I was able to get lots of different colors in this particular one. There's a lot of blue and purple and some even some red. So some red here, purplish red, a blue, blue and some purple, lots of purpley pink. I felt I was able to get a lot of different colors in here. This was a little bit messy. Uh, and the background, I've never done a flat wash that worked out still. I, I guess I need to practice it. I've been practicing it with gouache recently, but I haven't practiced it with watercolor. I don't know if it's that you can't do flat washes. If you have granulating pigment, which this particular one was granulating, but it's really, it's really choppy and I don't know why. And it distracts from what I would rather be focusing on. So I wish that the flat wash had worked out. It didn't like the color though. Love the color down here. Eh. I don't know about up here. And then there's like a splotch of yellow. I don't remember what happened, but that could have been avoided. But overall, I'm happy with the symbolism that I was able to portray here. Day six, we've got Mandrake. Now, what I liked about this one the best, the best thing about this one here is that I got it done quickly. The thing that I don't like the most about it is that the Mandrake roots I feel like are really predictable. They are done in some sort of pattern or something. Uh, obviously I created the pattern, but I wasn't random enough with it. And I like the way the dirt turned out. This was a case where I'm not really going for a flat wash and I was able to create a lot of texture in the dirt with a granulating pigment. And that's great. I like how it turned out. I like how it's not realistic and yet is still recognizable as the thing that it is, the plant. I'm, I'm mostly talking about the plant. And then I was able to mix like m the idea I had in my head of like a woman's body plus the mandrake root. And I think it looks like something that I would paint. I feel like my 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 style or my my uh, the way I would do things is shining through. It's my probably the most creative thing that I did because it's very, very far from the original. There's not a lot of the original uh, material. It's not copy and paste in any way, which is a lot of times what I would do. Copy and paste as far as like the overall image, I try to keep it as realistic as possible and then maybe change the colors or add my own flair to it somehow. This one also not particularly realistic. This was a conglomeration of also multiple reference photos. I used one reference photo for, oh, oh, I forgot to say day eight is the Panay monitor. And it, I used a reference photo for a monitor lizard and then looked at the Panay lizard specifically and tried to emulate its skin texture. So its its skin is like really wrinkly, but it's pure black, which I was gonna go for, but then most of my, my main goal for most of my paintings was to get as many colors in there as possible. So I was planning to put like a lot of under colors and then darken it. And then once I got it to this stage, I was like, oh, I think it's done. So I just left it. The background isn't really what I would prefer. It looks very like 80s peach, which isn't really a vibe I like, but so I'm not so happy with the background, but I stopped early on this monitor lizard because I liked how it was. So it's not very realistic. It's not a dark black. Yeah, you just check out the Panay monitor lizard. They're really cool looking, but yeah, not super realistic. I like that I moved away from realism a little bit, a little bit out of my comfort zone. Okay, so the next one, this is one of my favorites, by the way. This is the Pinto spine tail. So this was day, Day 10, because of all the problems that I was having with the granulation and layering with the previous paintings, I decided to switch it up from core watercolors to Sennelier watercolors before I started the Pinto Spine Tail painting. These are the core watercolors I was using, and this is Sennelier. And we're going to try using that instead. Um, I prefer, uh, I prefer, Definitely don't prefer a metal palette. I prefer this type, but I don't have enough of these and they're pretty expensive and I'm not going to be getting another one soon. So 
We're gonna do this and see, I like how I've laid out the colors. Uh, this will be my mixing area, so let's turn that around. You can go back. Let's do this. Pinto spine tail. This one was a combination of a really great reference photo. I actually think it might've been two reference photos. How I managed to make something with the shadows in the right places this well, uh, with two reference photos, I don't know. So I'm thinking it was only one, but I'm not sure. But then there was also the moon. And I made sure that the the way we're seeing the moon is correct for the hemisphere that we're in. So this isn't the moon that I normally see because I'm in the northern hemisphere. This one is in the southern hemisphere the, where this bird would live. So it, this is the southern hemisphere. And I, I want to say Brazil, not remembering for sure, is where you would be if you were this bird seeing this moon. And I loved how I made it glow. I loved the salt application that I used. It turned out wonderfully. I just feel like the whole painting came together really well. Uh, I mean, I'm not super happy with the way the foot or this branch looks, but I think that I like that it's brighter where the feet are and it's like kind of arrowing towards the bird so you look at it, but I think it's too bright. I want the focus to be on the bird, so I wouldn't want the bird's face, so I wouldn't want the feet to be bright. So, I mean, maybe I would change that, but I don't think it looks bad. I love the way this turned out. It's using two images together. I just think if all my paintings were like this, I'd be really happy. I think this one is exactly the way I want because it's very, the shadows very deep and detailed. And if I like, I like to, I would like to make things that you feel like you can reach out and, and hold. Um, I don't care if they're real in real life. I just want the painting to look as real as possible, if that makes any sense. So that's why I oftentimes go towards realism is to get that feeling of like, you just pick it up off the page. And I like painting the moon. I think the moon is super cool, so. All right, the next one, let's look at my notes here. Day 12, and it is the red squirrel. <laughs> Very, <laughs> very <laughs> on the nose there red squirrel yeah so the squirrel looks red that worked out i think that went great um this is a tree of life in the background why did i do this i know i didn't write down why i did the red squirrel but i do like the way this one turned out it's not perfect it's not exactly how i would have it the tree branch turned out really great. I think it looks really real, but then do I want the focus to be on the tree branch? I don't know. I'd rather be on the squirrel. And the squirrel's eating a piece of corn. Don't know if you can see that. I like the way the shadows of the squirrel went. I had a really great reference photo. It's a little sharp for me. I feel like, or a little stiff. The squirrel seems a little stiff. <laughs> So I don't love that. And the tree of life looks super cool. Love the colors that I used and I love that the squirrel still pretty much is the centerpiece and it pops out further than the than the tree of life. I just feel like there's something missing, but I don't know what. The camera is attached to the table and every time I talk with my hands, I'm making it shake. I am so sorry to you all and I'm so sorry to future me who has to edit the shaky footage. Uh, sorry about that. I'm gonna try to keep my hands to myself here. So yeah, I love the colors of this piece and love the, some of the realisticness of the tree. But yeah, if you like something missing, not sure what it is. This is day 14, Zebra Dukier. Please ignore that one for the moment. And I love this one. I love this one so much because it is a little further away from realism, which is kind of hard for me. And I love the colors that I used, but also the parent feeding the baby. I just think that's so sweet. I loved being able to depict that and they are a really unique looking animal. And I used several different images to squish it together and I think it turned out okay. So sometimes I do that and I don't like how it turns out. And in this case, I do, I do like how it turned out. I think it turned out great. I used a lot of contrasting like deep blues and then white to kind of show form and I really like that effect and I really like how the background is really rich but I don't feel like it overpowers the front. I still feel like it stands out probably because I put some white here 
and here. And I mean, I'm not really sure why it works, to be honest. You guys told me, why is this working? <laughs> and, and the squirrel one isn't, I, I'm not sure. I'm, I still don't really know. Day 17, it's pronounced dull, I think. There's some lore behind this. And so I wanted to do an, an ancient building that's broken down. I guess, I think the dolls like maybe hang around ruins. I think they literally said they were they hang around ruins. So I wanted, I love ruins. <laughs> I think they're so cool. And I love a chance to paint them. So I painted them too bright. Uh, you can't, you might not be able to see it, but but close up, I can see that I have shaded this with gray to tone down the colors of the background so that the doll stands out more. The doll is standing on a skull and maybe this tree needs to be toned down too, but it just turned out so I really struggle with vegetation. So it turned out really well and I couldn't bear to tone it down. So I left it. I don't know if it's the best composition because of all that. Nothing's really pointing to the doll which is where we want the focus. So the tree's kind of like pointing to the top of this ruin and your attention's going there. Also the ruin has some, probably some of the lightest colors here. And then, so the contrast isn't necessarily on the dole. The dole's not standing out. So I would say overall, like I love this painting because of what I was able to bring together. From the perspective of composition, I don't think it's a very successful painting, but I like it. I like the colors and I like the story that I was able to bring into it. So I'm, I'm happy with it, even if, it if, even if it's a fail as far as technicality goes. Okay, so this is day 18. This is the Mongolian horse. And I had to use two reference images for this one because I had a really fantastic reference image to use as the base for the horse. Like the lighting and everything looks really cool. And then I added on features of what would be a Mongolian horse. Now, granted, I didn't notice if they had longer legs or shorter legs or thicker legs or anything like that. What I changed was the coloring and then I changed the length of the mane. So I think it's shorter than it would have been in the original reference photo. The face of this horse I struggled with for hours. Like I just kept going back and forth. It looked like an antelope for a really, really long time until I finally was able to get it to looking like a horse. And I don't remember what exactly got me there. And the reason I was able to mess with it is because all of these paintings are started in watercolor and then finished in colored pencil. And the colored pencil on the nose is, you know, probably this thick by now. And then I have some colored pencil etching in the grass to add texture to it. I love, 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 love how it turned out and I loved doing it. It was really a fun thing to do. For a painting where I've squished together two reference photos, I feel like this one turned out really well. I'm happy with it. But to be honest, it's not my favorite. The colors, is too much yellow and I don't know. It doesn't, no, it, no spark joy for me on this one. Uh, I feel like I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish with a relative amount of finesse, but it still feels like there's just something missing. Don't know what it is. If you guys have an idea, please tell me. I don't know. Day 20, the Egyptian lion. I learned that all lions are part of the same species. There's no subspecies of lions. So there aren't any lions that couldn't mate with other lions on earth at this time which I thought that was super interesting. As far as the painting goes, so fun to make. This was a really fun one to do. I was able to use my salt technique that I've been using for a while. And it did some really cool stuff that mostly got covered up, which is unfortunate, but I feel like I got the darks dark enough, the lights light enough. I feel like the focus is where it should be. It's a great reference photo. It's one reference photo, so it made it really easy to do that. And I was able to add my own thing to the reference photo. So I like it to be realistic, but I also like to be able to add my own flair to it. The only thing is, is that I just feel like there's something missing <laughs> to it. Like, I feel like in some ways, it's like a painting someone else could have done. I don't know if that makes any sense. I think that I've seen other paintings done in a similar style 
in a similar way that just turned out really similarly. Not that I was copying anyone in particular or, I mean, I was using, a, I searched for hours for this particular reference photo until I finally decided on this particular image. And I love it. I think it's so fun watching the dad lion, like, get in and mess around with his baby lion. Like, I think that's a lot of fun. But, yeah, I don't know if I could have done anything to make it more mine, I guess is the question. <laughs> Any ideas you have on that? You tell me, because I'm a little confused. So yeah, but overall, love the way this turned out, felt very accomplished and happy and just like the process, my workflow just went really well and there weren't any hiccups and it was a lot of fun to make and I got to use the salt technique and that was great. So I really enjoyed making this one. Owlette, day 22, October 22nd. The Forest Owlette was one of my favorites because of some of the technical stuff that I was able to pull off. I got this new brush that just made these really, like the shape of the leaves that I was able to make with the brush turned out really natural in my opinion. The owl itself, I am so happy with how it turned out. I feel like you could almost pick the owl up off the page. The colors are fine. There's nothing wrong with them. They're very loyal to the original. And that's great. Uh, not a lot of my own colors thrown in there. Some. Uh, in the tail, I've put quite a bit of yellow. Yeah, that's it. I really <laughs> emphasize the color in the eye. I always emphasize, no matter how tiny the eye is, in every animal, I put in some detail into it. I think it's so important that we see the eyes of the animal as being similar to ours so that we respect them as we respect or hopefully respect other humans. I use masking fluid on for these white dots on the back and on the top of the owl, and I love that it came off the way it was supposed to, that there wasn't any damage to the paper. Oh, I used it here too. So this one I really took a lot of time and effort and planning and consideration to implement, and I think it worked out really well. It doesn't always happen like that. You'll put down masking fluid and it'll rip up your paper or it'll be in the wrong spot or the edges will be too hard, but I was able to soften the edges where I wanted to. After I took off the masking fluid, the white surface of the paper was revealed. I added yellow or, you know, maybe some gray, tone it down a little bit. There's some light brown here in this section here to, you know, give the owl a feeling of roundness by creating some shadows and it just worked great. The only thing I would say didn't go exactly as planned is that there are some areas you might not be able to tell, but the color that I was using, the blue that I was using as a background was granulating and kind of collecting and sticking in one spot instead of a nice smooth background. Like I said, I really need to learn more about how to do a flat wash because Knowing that might have helped here, but it, because it, because it's a tree situation and we're actually looking through leaves, it doesn't matter, but that was a technical problem. And I think I shaded it with colored pencil in some areas to make it more even, which is fine because it's a mixed media piece, so I can do that. But if I was just using watercolor, I would have been uh, in trouble. Okay, day 24. This is the straw colored fruit bath that I'm gonna have to hold because it's gonna fall. It very much wrinkled the paper up and is bending. I don't like this one. Sorry, I know people don't like it when I say that, but it's just, I don't know, it kind of just, when I look at it up close, there are things I like about it. I really like the bat's face. I really like the bat's muff. Some, you know, it's scarf area that the colors on that look really beautiful, looks very realistic, like you can reach out and touch it, but the everything else about the bat does not feel like that. And that just feels a little inconsistent. No flat wash on the background. It just didn't work out at all. Uh, Mostly I use this, 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 and this. Next one up there. Hi, kitty to make it so that the background wasn't grabbing more attention than the foreground, which is the bat. And I really love the granulating effects. They're so beautiful, 
but I wanted the emphasis to be on the bat and not the background. I didn't want that stealing from it. It was fun to make though. It was it was an enjoyable experience. Most of them were fun to make, but I remember this one being nice. And I think I had to use a magnifying glass to like do the details of the face because I wanted it to be like, I, want, I didn't want it messy. So I needed to be able to see it even though it was really small. Day 26, this is the Indian bison. I love how this one turned out. I love when you get like kind of a white background and all the emphasis is on your centerpiece, uh, the Indian bison in this case. I think, I don't think I used any masking fluid, but somehow I was able to, I'd have to look, go back and look at the footage, somehow able to really delineate the bison from the grass really separated and that's kind of a messy thing to do because most of the grass is white with some green uh, layered on top layer but it was just a matter of painting around the tiny grass. I think that's what I did. That takes a long time um, and uh, it's hard for me to do and hard for me to focus on and pay attention to. But what I really like about it is the color that's in the bison. So I used two different reference images and I could have just picked one, but I like the colors of one and I like the composition of the other one better. So I opted to combine the two, which made things a little bit more complicated or challenging. And I, made sure that you could tell that he was a redhead <laughs> or brown hair however but not like the body is like a very deep deep brown black color and then the head they've got hair like us just any color i also emphasized the eyes i made them green and the nose on one of the reference images you could see all the freckles and there were different color freckles even i think in the reference image which was interesting and i made sure that i put them, I've got some blue and purple and pink and yellow. And do I have any green? Yeah, I even have some green right here. I was able to squeeze a lot of colors in and it was really so nice to make. And I, I think my favorite though is its nose and, and the freckles. So this one was really fun to make. And I like how the background did not steal from the foreground. It's hard for me to do. It's hard for me to remember to paint in layers, background, foreground, midground. I, I find that challenging and I was able to do it here and I'm very proud of this one. I love how this one turned out. Okay, day 28, Himalayan brown bear. Let's bring that in a little closer. I feel the same way about this one that I feel about the, the one before it. I feel like it was a success story. I think that by the time I got to the Indian bison, what I was seeing is that days and days of painting in a row led me to more success with each painting. If I haven't painted in a while, the chance of me having a failure the first couple days is higher. And then if I've been doing it for a while, the chance of me having a success are higher. And I think that's really interesting to note. In the case of this bear, I love the, the highlights. There's a lot of yellow, but I feel like there's enough other colors that it's balanced out and it doesn't feel overpowering to me the way it did with the first painting that I did, the cat. I had one reference image for the bear, one reference image for the flowers. I was able to not put so many details in that area and this area, but create more details there. That's something that's so hard for me is doing when to add detail and when not. I think it turned out really good. You guys tell me what you think, because what I'm wondering is if I think it looks good because I'm just so used to it or if it actually just worked out. I used a magnifying glass to make sure I got the bear's eyes and nose as, as realistic as possible. I like the way this one turned out, the lighting on the bear, and it's just beautiful. I The reference photo is just amazing, and I just really enjoyed making it because it was such a smooth, calming process with only one reference image that I had to use instead of having to combine a whole bunch and really use a lot of brain power. This was pretty easy to make, and I enjoyed it. I also enjoyed the composition, how it turned out. You tell me, like, does it look like the flowers are just growing out of the back? Or is it obvious that the flowers are in the background? I don't know. Last one, day 30, Japanese river otter. Let's see if I'm, let's flatten that out here. I uh, love how this one turned out. Loved all the colors in it. It's a little bit too much of a pastel palette for me, but 
just in like this area here. But I like that I was able to add other colors than what was in the original reference photo. It was one reference photo. Um, I traced it and I'm really glad I did because it helped me specifically tracing the background was super helpful to do because I find water to be difficult to paint because it's always changing and you just don't know what you're gonna get. I liked using the reference photo to just kind of see a pattern in it and make it a little more understandable for me to paint. Magnifying glass to paint the eye, even though the eye was really big, I just wanted, or I think it was the face in general to do. And I made a, so the only successful reel I've ever had made while I was painting this. And it was the last day and it, I was just in the flow. The only thing I would change is that I used a bigger brush to make some of the markings and I would probably go with a thinner brush or I would have done it wet and wet and diluted the pigment a bit more so that the, the, the heavier strokes that are in this area were less defined. Everything else I'm pretty happy with. Uh, I wouldn't like it to be less defined in that area too. I still feel really confused about how I want to paint fur. This is one way and it turned out fine, but I don't know. I feel like it could be better. So I feel like I've got some learning to do when it comes to the fur of animals, even though <laughs> how many animals did I paint that had fur? Like a lot, but a lot of times it was like far enough away that you couldn't see the details of the fur. So I'm still struggling with that. Um, but yeah, that is all. This is all 15. How am I gonna end this video? I'm dropping things. Okay, well, that's all. That's all 15 of the paintings that I did. I hope that you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on them and I will see you in the next one. Bye.